Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good? What brings you in today? How are you feeling? Yeah? Uh-huh. A little tired. A little punchy. Yeah. A little irritable. Yeah. Grumpy. Sure. I think that's where we're all at right now. I think most of us are short-tempered and a little stir-crazy right now. I think so. I think, you know, I, I, I think some days I'm just at the point where like, you know, I don't even, I don't even care what happens. I just, just want to get back to normal again. I want to just, just recover from all of this and get through whatever this lonely boredom is that we're all kind of drifting through. And I just kind of feel like my, my daily motivation, right? My spark is gone. I mean, that first week, man, the first week, the first week, my wife and I and our family, we, we cleaned and organized the garage, right? And we were doing yard work. And then the second and third week, I couldn't even get my family out of pajamas. <laughs> I mean, there's just no deadlines now. There's no schedule. There's no routine. Every day is the same. Well, that is if you can even remember what day it is. Just want some purpose right? Some purpose and some schedule, maybe some happiness again. I don't know if there's, is there an app? <laughs> is there an app we can download or is there just something we can do? Is there a checklist item that we can just check off and just, you know, make it all come back to normal again? I was looking up happiness and uh, science, science said they have the formula for happiness. It's true. Uh, science says that it's a combination of how satisfied you feel with life and then how uh, good you feel on a particular day. So it's a combination of being satisfied overall and then just, well, how good you feel from day to day. And it almost makes it seem like they think that you can control it yourself, right? You, you have the power to control how happy you are. Kind of like how uh, we equate diet and exercise with health and wellness, right? You need both those things working together. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there is a, a checklist item or if I can just wish that. I think, because I think most of us, we're just missing some daily routine, right? We miss that. I mean, it used to be easy. It, it used to be, you, you get up in the morning, early morning, and we'd make our kids breakfast, and we'd take our kids to school, and then we'd go to work, and then our kids would come home, they would do homework, we would come home, make dinner, maybe we'd have time for a little bit of family time and watch a family show together, and then we put the kids to bed and do the whole thing all over again. Now, the schedule is, uh, well, we get out of bed whenever, and we try to do a little bit of online school, and a lot of yelling and punchy, being punchy with each other, and. Then we, have, then we have lunch, and then the kids just zone out and watch TV and play video games and flop around the house until dinner. And we're all kind of a little on edge. And, and I mean, there's all the new things we're doing. And I, I like the new things. The new things are fun. We're playing a lot more board games, right? And we had a, our, our family, we enjoyed a little picnic out on our front lawn the other day, and we get all the Zoom calls with family and friends, that, those are fun. And, you know, and, and some of us are still working too. Let's not forget that. Some of us are still working. We're not all staying at home. But I think even for those of us who are working and for the many of us that will be going back to work, it still feels different. It still doesn't feel like there's a, a typical routine. And even though we might not be doing as much, it still feels like we're draining like we're tired. So, oh, I know. What do you got, right? All right, doc, you tell me, how do I fix this? What do you got in that little magic black book that you have called the Bible that can maybe address some of what I'm feeling? I've been thinking about that for a little bit and then looking at the life of Jesus and then just asking, well, Jesus seemed like he had it all together not just physically, but 
mentally. I mean, he was pretty sharp. And he seemed to be in control of just how he felt and his environment. So what did he do? I mean, what was Jesus' daily routine? What do we see him doing in the scriptures that help him when he's tired and when he's bored and when he's frustrated? And maybe we can adopt some of uh, Jesus' prescription for a healthy life. I thought, you know what, that's a good idea. Let's look at that for a couple of weeks. So this Sunday and next Sunday, we're gonna talk about Jesus' habits, the things he did on a weekly basis that enabled him to live a balanced life, a healthy life, a life with some schedule. And we'll just see what his prescription is. Jesus' prescription for a healthy life. Let's talk about it. So in looking through the scriptures, I came up with four habits for today, four things that we can look at in Jesus' life, and then next week we'll look at four more, okay? So the first one is that Jesus had a close circle of friends. Jesus had a close circle of friends. I mean, sure, sure, we all know, right? Jesus had the 12 disciples, and in Matthew 10, it says that Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And I think that's what we all think of when we think of Jesus hanging out with his friends. But I think we often forget that Jesus actually had a closer, more tight-knit circle of friends. I mean, he had the 12, sure, but there was three more when Jesus was off by himself or he would pull away from the crowds when you read the scriptures you would always see these three men with him and you probably know exactly who they are like if i just said well who is jesus's tight-knit circle who are his three friends you you could probably just shout out three names and you'd probably get it right because they're the names that would just kind of rise to the top and that's peter james and john right peter james and john last week at easter when we were talking about the transfiguration and Jesus goes up the mountain, it's Peter, James, and John who are there that witness that. Jesus says in John 15, I don't call you servants any longer. Instead, I call you friends. And remember, Jesus is fully God and he's fully human. And we see from his life that when he's stressed, when he's facing trials, when he is coming up on difficulties, he still had his three closest friends with him. Proverbs 27, 18 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens a friend. And I know that aside from boredom or our just kind of listless feelings, many of us are experiencing loneliness right now we are experiencing loneliness but just because we're at home that doesn't mean that we're not lonely and just because we're with our family it doesn't mean that we're not lonely i mean do me a favor no do your do yourself a favor okay and bug your friends please bug them call them write them direct message them on facebook uh post encouragement on their social media walls, get into Zoom and figure it out and have a video conference, or call them up and say, hey, we're all gonna meet at the church parking lot. We'll just pull into the parking lot, we'll all stay in our cars, and we'll just talk, right? We'll just have a meetup. Because I know we're thinking that those other people in our life, that they're all busy. You think, you know, they're busy, or we know we're thinking, oh, you know, I'm sure they're fine, but, they're bored too, right? They're bored too. And we all miss our friends and we all miss seeing people and talking to people and being around other adults. So call them, call your friends or text them or learn to send a group text and put them all into one text and, and talk them. You know, you could even send people voice memos instead of a text message. You can record a voice memo and send that and your friends could receive your voice talking to them or leave them a voicemail, right? Instead of thinking, well, the next time I see them, the next time I see them, I'll ask them. 
just call them on the phone and ask them now. Just, you don't have to talk for a really long time. In fact, I'd probably, I'd probably benefit more from people it, it, talking to my friends just for a little short bit. I, I, more, more talking over time than one long conversation for 45 minutes where we just catch up about everything. And, and I know you're thinking, ah, I don't know what to say and it'll, it'll probably be boring. You have my permission to call your friends and be boring, okay? Just call them to say hi, that you miss them. Just ask them how they're doing. I know we have to all stand six feet apart, but we can find other ways to be together. Second thing I noticed, Jesus also had alone time. Jesus took time away to be by himself. And I think for as much as we need our friends and to make those connections, we also need time for ourselves to be alone. And I think this one's kind of hard. And I know I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I get to go to work and work pulls me away from some of those people in the house and it, it gets me out and it gets me around new people. My wife is not as lucky, right? She can spend days after days of seeing these kids and, and never getting away. That's not normal. It's not normal to be around every member of your family for days on end. You need alone time. And it's kind of ironic, right? We're supposed to be home alone, but we're not alone. <laughs> we're with the same people every day. So for as much as we're missing that human contact from other people, we're constantly around the same people. And for as much as we think Jesus hung out with the 12 disciples, we also see time where he pulled away to recharge and where he was alone. In Luke 5, 16, it says, Jesus would withdraw to desolate places and pray. And remember, he's God. He's God. And he still models for us opportunities to get away and recharge. And, but we feel guilty. We feel guilty. And if we say, you know what? I'm just gonna get out for a minute. I'm gonna go walk around the block. Or I'm just gonna go take a drive. There's a little voice in our head that says, well, you gotta hurry and get back. Don't be gone too long, right? And we feel like we have to go back soon, that we can't take more time for ourselves. But what we see in the scriptures is Jesus values his time alone. Look at how many times we see him have moments to himself. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus prepares himself for a major task. He's going to be baptized. And before that takes place, he spends 40 days praying in the wilderness. Before he begins his ministry, before he begins a major thing in his life, Jesus pulls away by himself and has some alone time. We also see him recharge after work. Mark 6 says the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Jesus sends the 12 out to do ministry, to do work. And when they all returned, he encourages them and says, you need to get away for a little bit and you need some rest. We also see Jesus pull away when he wants to experience grief, that when Jesus found out about John the Baptist and that he had been executed, Jesus goes away by himself to grieve. Before Jesus makes an important decision, he's gonna choose the 12 disciples in Luke 6. And the Bible says that that evening, before he makes that choice, he spends the night in prayer. And we also see Jesus have alone time when he's going through a lot of stress, when he's experiencing a lot of anxiety. Just hours before he's arrested, he goes to the Mount of Olives and he goes a short distance even away from his disciples 
and he prays. And we know that he's in great agony because of what he's about to face. We even see Jesus just daily pull aside by himself just to pray. Many times in Jesus' ministry, he spends alone time in prayer. Being alone doesn't mean lonely, all right? It doesn't mean lonely. And Jesus knows the importance of having a little personal time. It allows you to reboot your brain. It allows you to unwind. Probably helps you focus so that you can concentrate on things that are coming up. And it also allows for you to have deeper thoughts. It allows you to experience introspection. In fact, spending time alone can actually help improve your relationships with other people. So even if you're busy, I think you should pencil in a little alone time. Third, Jesus spent time in prayer and worship. You know, every week our church has tried to have a little schedule with our worship time and our devotionals. You know, we meet on Sundays at 10. We have a Monday devotional. We have youth group and kids activities on Wednesday evening and also Sunday after service. And then we have a live event on Facebook at one o'clock. And so, you know, we're trying to put in some, some schedule, right? Because as people, we like that. We like schedule and we like routine. God makes us, we are created by God, just like the world was created by God. The world has seasons, the world has cycles, the world has rhythm, and we're tied into that rhythm. And so we are healthier when we have a schedule. And I know we're discouraged right now. There's a little bit of hindrance because we say, well, I can't have my schedule because I'm not allowed to be in, in groups right? I can't be in a group of 10 people or more and I can't be six feet away from my friends. But that doesn't mean that the worship side of church or the prayer side of church has to stop. Have you spent time in worship since this began? Have you spent time in prayer since this began? Or have you been taking a break from that? as well. Let me suggest that you need to keep a little scheduled prayer time. Don't wait for the church to remind you. Don't wait until you feel like it or until you have to. Give yourself a schedule. Do you pray in the mornings? Do you pray when you wake up? Do you pray before meals? Do you pray before you go to bed? It's, it's going to be our prayer time that contains those special moments where we can praise God and thank God and ask God for things. But we also need those times so that we can share our worries and share our concerns to ask God for help, to ask God to intervene in our life. And again, even though Jesus was God and he was always connected to God, he still models prayer for his followers. And prayer can also be a time where we worship. You don't need a worship team. You don't need a choir. You don't need a hymnal, right? You don't need projected screens to worship. Most of us have thousands upon thousands of hours of worship music just right on our smartphone. We can easily access it through the internet or through YouTube or through the many albums, right? And the CDs, the MP3s that we've downloaded I think for as much as we need the quiet moments in our life and the alone time, we also need loud moments. We need moments of joy. We need moments of celebration. True, I think church life was different for Jesus, right? Church was different for him, sure. But, but look at some of these passages. Luke 4 says, as Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. Okay, so we see Jesus teaching. When do we see him teaching? On the Sabbath, right? He's teaching on a worship day. And if he's teaching on a worship day, he's probably in a synagogue, especially if people are listening to him and astonished at his teaching, right? They're sitting and they're listening to him. Matthew 26 says, and when they had sung a hymn, 
they went out to the Mount of Olives. Have you ever had that picture in your mind? I know we have a lot of pictures of Jesus, but have you ever had a picture of him singing? Singing a worship song? Jesus being joyful and swaying back and forth with his friends, singing loudly, singing praises? But it's true. The things that we do when we worship, Jesus did those things too. And just because we're in lockdown, and just because we can't be in a church building, it doesn't mean we can't have moments of prayer. It doesn't mean we can't have moments of worship. So schedule some time to be with God. Last one. Jesus hung out in God's creation. Now, I'm one of those people that loves camping. I love tent camping, roughing it. We've actually had uh, two different camping trips on the books. Uh, one last year, one this year. Both of them got canceled due to weather, at, you know, Texas weather. And, uh, but I think the reason why I love camping so much is because there's just something about being outdoors, right? I mean, and you remove all the walls, you remove the concrete, you remove all the electrical outlets, and it just helps you reset. You know, there's a phrase, right? There's a phrase we say that it's healthy to have a change of scenery. Let's have a change of scenery, right? And I think there is no better scenery than the creation that God has already made. It's beautiful. Being in a beautiful place like an ocean or a forest or the mountains or a lake or a river or a stream, it just makes you feel better. There's something about the beauty of the great outdoors and Jesus knows that. I often how note how often the the scenery in Jesus's life changes. Mark 2:13 says once again Jesus went out beside the lake. Mark 2:23 one sabbath Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples walked along. Matthew 15 Jesus went on from there and walked beside the sea of Galilee and he went up on the mountain and sat down there. Luke 8, one day he got out of a boat with his disciples and said, let's go across to the other side of the lake. And they went out. Jesus goes boating. Jesus spends time on lakes. He walks through grain fields. He sits on mountaintops. Jesus is God and he enjoys being in his beautiful creation. You know, sometimes when you feel distant from somebody, you try to find different ways to feel close to them. Maybe you could sit in their favorite chair, or maybe you could smell an item of their clothing. Nature, being around nature does that for me with God. Being around all the good things that God makes, being in his creation, it helps me feel close to him. And we're so fortunate, right? We're so fortunate here in Walden that we're on Lake Conroe and that we have access to wooded areas. We have access to all those pathways that are behind our house and uh, along the golf course. We have nature all around us to enjoy. You know, there's a song our worship team in second service sings sometimes called Let the Praises Ring. And there's a line in that song that says, let everything I say and do be founded in my faith in you. I lift up my holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. And the key line for me in that song is, let everything I say and do be founded in my faith in you. Jesus worshiped God in all areas of his life. And for us, for us, maybe we can recapture some of that joy and recapture some of that happiness in our life if we can schedule some more time with God. Worship is the product of a changed life. Worship comes across in what we say and in what we do. And we can't just reserve worship and prayer and being connected with God as something that only happens at church. Worship needs to be a part of our schedule. It needs to be a part of our routine. And it needs to be something that we do at work, at school, when we're in traffic, when we're with our kids. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you felt sick 
I mean, if you really were sick, you'd go see a doctor, right? You'd go see the doctor and, and the worse you felt, the more you'd be willing to fix whatever it was so that you could get your life back to normal. Don't you think we should treat our spiritual life with that same intensity, that same seriousness, that same determination? I mean, after all, it's the spiritual part of us that will live forever, not our physical. Allow Jesus to not only give you some quantity in life, but some quality and, and allow God to heal you spiritually. I started off this whole thing by asking you how you felt. How do you feel today? Right? Came out with my clipboard, my old doctor's costume, said, hey, how do you feel? Because if you're, if, you're, if you're happy right now, that's great. But I don't know that we can always control that. We can't always control our daily happiness. Because let's face it, life gets in the way. But I can better manage my health. And health leads to happiness. My spiritual health leads to joy. Make time for your friends. Make time for yourself. Make time to spend in God's creation and make time for prayer and worship. Fall into these daily routines that we see Jesus use as his prescription for a healthy life. And may everything you say and do be grounded by your faith. Let's pray. Father God, we just pray as a church. We just pray for everyone who's tired right now. Everyone who just feels glum and listless, directionless, bored, exhausted, fatigued, overwhelmed, stressed. Lord, we know that we can lay all these burdens down at the cross. And we know that everything is just heightened right now. We're all heightened. And we don't have an outlet even if we wanted to burst into tears, there wouldn't even be somebody that we could hug. We're missing that human contact, that human element to church. We're missing each other. Lord, we're asking you to stand in the gap between us and our brother and sister, that you would be that shoulder to cry on, that you would be that hand to hold, that you would be those arms that hold us, Lord, heal the loneliness, heal the brokenness, heal the tiredness, heal the stress that our church is feeling, that our families are feeling. Revive us again. Give us that spark, that energy, that joy, that happiness that we know only comes from you. Let us find direction and schedule. Let us find connection not just with each other, but with you in every single day. Lord, we thank you for worship, for songs, for joy, for prayer. We thank you for this church that connects us. Let everything we say and do be grounded by our faith in you. We lift up holy hands and we sing. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Be sure to share this file, uh, this link on your social media walls. Uh, tell your friends that we meet together uh, at 10 o'clock, both on Facebook Live and over on YouTube. And again, uh, we'll have a devotional on Monday for you, and then we'll meet periodically during the week. Our church offices are always available to receive phone calls and email. Call us, encourage us. We wanna encourage you and call you. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.